No Line on the Horizon is the 12th studio album by the um, rock band U2. Of course one of the biggest bands ever. Um, and probably most people would think that I hate this band because ooh they're simplistic and they sold out and Bono's a pretentious crybaby and although those things might be true uh, but I still love you too. I still think they're a great band. They made some really great albums and some great tunes. And I'm genuinely a fan of their music. So there we go. Um, I love 80s U2. I love 90s U2. Well, I like it. And I'm kind of mixed about 2000s U2. But I still think that their prior two albums are pretty good. They're pretty good albums. Although a bit bland and predictable, but there's still there's still some really good songs on there, so um, But YouTube was slowly declining in quality after those two albums. I believe that. Um, don't no, fuck no. Uh, All that you can leave behind was a critical success, and you know, it was a great album and sketchy. So it was essentially the best album that they released in the 2000s, arguably the last great album that they had. And it was even, I believe, in Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums. Although, I don't agree with that, but, you know, still great album, I think, so there we go. And then um, Atomic Bomb being kind of a sequel, kind of doing the same things, with some different things here and there, but it's mostly the same. But you could definitely see that they were going for a more commercial and a more predictable route in the 2000s. And then after five years they were basically gone. Uh, the, atomic bomb, the atomic bomb blew up and they basically, it basically took all of um, U2's quality and all of their songwriting and all of their integrity away. Uh, not all of it, but a lot of it though. Uh, so instead of that we have a pretty... Um, hated album or pretty forgettable album uh, already into it you know we have a uh, what the hell is even an album cover it's just it's pretty much the most boring album cover I've ever seen it's just like a flat line it's just like a grey ocean I believe with a white sky and kind of a lighting in the background that's just really fucking bland um, it's defined as just rock, so it's just a rock album, just pure rock, nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. Um, it's 53 minutes long, I think that runtime is way too much, although it isn't as bad as uh, One Minute by the Peppers, or the Chili Peppers. Um, yeah, you know, so... Um, uh, yeah, let's just go into this reckless and shall we fucking know. Uh, so we start off with the title track and this is honestly just a really forgettable track. There are some uh, conventional things going on in this track but overall it didn't really catch my ear and just didn't really um, satisfy me really. And actually the whole record is written by Bono. Most of it, some of the whole band. Uh, the Edge contributed lyrics on some tracks. That's basically it. That's really it. Bonner wrote most of it. So that's maybe why it sounds so pretentious and so over emotional. But there we go. Uh, then we have Magnificent, and this is. Yeah, this is really the best track of the album. I would say that this is really the last true U2 moment because it has a really captivating riff. It has a really. Um, satisfying riff I would say, it sounds really melancholic, it sounds really like classic U2. Um, I, I just really love the song, I, I, I personally think this is a great song. And actually when I heard this track I thought it was from thought it was from early 2000s U2 or maybe late 80s U2 really. It really sounds like that for me, to me but apparently it was from this song so you can't say that's a positive because it sounds like classic U2, but you can also say it's a, it's a negative because it's, it sounds the same like their old stuff, so either way, it's, it's, they kind of shot themselves in the foot there, but I still think it's, it is a great song and that you should check it out. If you think this is a terrible record, then you know, you can say, 
Well, a great song of a terrible album, then this is definitely the song, but I, I don't think it's terrible, it's just a bit, yeah, it's just a bit eh for me, you know, it's not the best, not the worst, the worst is still yet to come, <laughs> fucking hell, uh, the innocent sequels anybody, fucking hell, uh, then we have Moment of Surrender, and this is um, just a really dreadful track, this is the longest song of the album, 7 minutes and 24 seconds, and I'm not sure, but I believe this is the longest U2 song ever. Maybe somebody's gonna correct that. I want to say Rock Dude, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he's a U2 hater. So there we go. He hates a lot of shit. Um, so this song is just really dreadful. It's just it's not per se painful to listen to, but it's just kind of like seven minutes, really, you know, for U2. Fucking no. It's just filler for me it's just pointless it's just doesn't really add anything and it's just overall not the best really um then we have unknown color and i do really like this track because it's really uh, melancholic it's just really uh mellow it's just really relaxing in nature and there is some really beautiful piano on this track so overall i did really enjoy this track it is a really mellow really uh, relaxing song to listen to and one of the redeemable songs of the album really. Um, then we get into some big hits although everything is clickable on Wikipedia. That's basically because YouTube is over glorified so there we go. Um, so then we have I'll go <laughs> fucking gag. Um, I'll go crazy if I don't go crazy tonight. Um, yeah, and I honestly don't really mind this song, it's the longest song title of the album, fuck no. But actually, if you go to producers, there's a dreadful producer on this track, and I'm like, why? Why is this piece of shit on there, Will I Am, really? Will I Am is on the production on this, uh, on this track, and I was like, really? It's just, why do you have him on there, really? Yeah, I believe he's, yeah, he's on this track. So, so I'm just looking at this like really, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, Lil Wayne singing for Weezer. That's, it's just why, you know, why, fucking hell. <sighs> Jesus. Um, yeah, you know, I think that the falsetto that Bono has on this track is really cringy and really doesn't hold up today. It's almost almost a decade old, I believe, but... It's, yeah, this song is just really cringy for me, it's just, uh, it is memorable, it has some memorable licks from uh, The Edge. It is a nice song in general, if you listen to it like an isolated instrumental version, but Bono's vocals are fucking abysmal on this track, really. It's, it's not terrible, but it's definitely one of the, the low points of the record, especially with that Will I Am credit, Jesus Christ. I mean, you're fucking you too. I mean, for fuck's sake, man. One of the biggest bands, and you have Will I Am on your own. You have all of them just. That's a low blow. That's a low blow, really. Uh, then we have probably the most infamous single of the album, which is Get On Your Boots. And honestly, don't really mind this song. It is uh, 3 minutes and 25 seconds. It's actually. Yeah, it's actually the only 3 minute song. Or, or actually, the short song of the album. The only 3 and a half minute songs. There we go. Um, I do really like the production on this track, it sounds a little bit iffy for me, but I do like the kind of heavy cringing um, like guitar riffs on it by The Edge and I do really like the uh, vocals by uh, Bono, well I don't love them, but they're still decent I, I think Get on your boots uh, uh, uh. You know, it is catchy, it is captivating for sure, it's not the best U2 single by any means of the uh, imagination, but uh, but it's still decent. Uh, you know, I think it's still a decent uh, single by the band. Although, you know, U2's literally seen as one of the best rock bands ever, so decent doesn't cut us for fans because fans were expecting, you know, or fans are used to, you know, a, uh, a War, a Joshua Tree, Unforgettable Fire, fucking amazing in my opinion. Uh, Achtung Baby, you know, people are, are used to that quality of you. And if you give them this, then it's really underwhelming to say the least. Uh, then we have stand up comedy, and I would say that after Get On Your Boots, which is still a decent track, I, you know, I think the, the record kind of goes downhill from here. 
even more and it just never really recovers. Um, Stand-up comedy is just kind of a cringy kind of, um, you know, way of Bono having kind of a laugh for himself. Uh, lyrics are really cringy, his vocals are really cringy, and just his songwriting in general is really bland and really predictable. Really forgettable track, and I wouldn't mind never listening to it again, really. Now we have Fess being born, and I believe that uh, Bono is kind of like crying for like third world countries again, you know, oh, there's a kid being born, praise the Lord, you know, he's kind of going on that religion. Uh, religious kind of you know that's charity kind of side of his um, which I don't hate you know I, I do love that uh, you two you know Bono does the charity work that's you know he can be kind of a he, he can be kind of a preachy dick about it sometimes but uh, but mostly you know he's a really nice guy about it and he donates a shitload so you know what's not to love about that that's a really noble deed of his I mean he's a fucking millionaire so he should um, well, you know, not per se, but uh, it, it is a nice thing that he, that he does it. But uh, to make a track about it, not really the best thing to do, really. It just makes you like it. it just makes you look like a uh, an arrogant asshole that wants, you know, attention and like critical praise or something for something that is pretty, you know, self-explanatory. Self, you know, it's your own choice. Not really have to make a song about it. Fucking no. Uh, then we have White as Snow, this is actually uh, a nice song I would say. Uh, has some really melancholy parts on it, White as Snow, it, it is a nice title. Reminds, me of the, reminds you of the winter of course. Uh, it's just a really mellow track, I do think it is kind of a, uh, a rehash of Magnificent slash... Um, well it's, it's not... Well, it's, not a re yeah, it's a li little bit of a rehash of Magnificent but not really. Um, yeah, so there we go, so forget the, um, or yeah, it's a bit of a rehash of Unknown Color, I think it's a, it's a bit mellow and a bit just relaxing to listen to, so it's kind of in the same vein, but I did really love that song, so, um, you know, to have another song like that is not the worst thing. Uh, so this track is pretty good overall, I would say it's uh, definitely one of the high points again of this record, and... Def yeah, definitely a high point for the record. Really, really melancholic, really mellow, really easy listening. YouTube is pretty easy listening in general, but this song especially. Not a bad thing, but definitely not the most challenging song to listen to. Uh, you know, listen to the last song, so for a challenge. Fucking hell. Um, then we have Cedars of uh, Lebanon. Or, I actually, for yeah, I actually forgot Breathe. Because Breed is just such a forgettable, bland song. You know, if you think that the record does get better, then this song is just dreadful. There's really bad production, really bad lyrics, really bad vocals by Bono. Just everything that I don't like about modern U2 is on this track. It's just really cringy. Kind of reminds me of Num. You know, not the Linkin Park song, but <laughs> you know that I mentioned that fucking band with it, with uh, in the same breath as this band. Fucking hell. It's kind of that's kind of an insult, but really, but that record was better than this one. So there we go. Um, yeah, but you know, Breach is just really forgettable. Actually, forgot to talk about, it, so that should tell you. That should say enough. Uh, and then we have Cedars of Lebanon. This is just kind of a another one of these really mellow, kind of one of these really relaxing. Uh, melancholic, you know, closers. It's just kind of the same as uh, White as Snow and you know, Color. Just kind of, you know, relaxing to listen to. Just kind of quiet. Just kind of peaceful, moody. That's kind of the whole uh, atmosphere of the record, I would say. But definitely on this closing track. And I do really love a good, like, harmful, unharmful, uh, peaceful, you know, closure. And that's what it did here. So good closure. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit predictable, but um, it's a nice closure nonetheless. And so overall, this was not a horrible record. I would say it's definitely weaker than the prior two albums, and it doesn't even come close to YouTube's prime in the in the 80s and the early 90s. I would say, or in the 90s in general, I would say 80s, very 90s. There we go. Uh, so, I so I do really love that YouTube. You know, I still love YouTube to this day, but they're definitely as they progress through their discography, they do go down my favorites list, down 
and down and down and down and that's mainly because their modern output is fucking horrible so if you two would probably release like another shitty album then i would probably like toss them off my list because it's just so fucking unlistenable so you two please stop making new records just please stop stick to your old work like you know the stones do and just fucking quit already you're fucking billionaires at this point uh, so this is still i think a redeemable album although that will i am credit is really fucking cringy but uh but i still think this record is decent really the less listenable u2 album in my opinion and even this album is kind of eh for me but it's still, but i still think it's decent it still has like a, a handful of uh, good tracks on it and kind of a handful of really bad ones so it's kind of mixed for me so i'm gonna, gonna give this record a 6.5 out of 10. Uh, let me know what you think about it i think it's better than uh one hot minute i don't think it's better than uh you know weezer's green album and um you know what else did i review fucking off um coldplay's malik zala yeah and that was also a thing i wanted to mention that you know coldplay was kind of a u2 ripoff in their early days i would say kind of a ripoff of um radio as well you know bands like that um they tried to copy those bands and u2 is basically you know they saw the success of coldplay and they thought we want that success back again because we were one of the biggest bands at some point so they basically tried to replicate coldplay on this record i would say at least uh you know on their 2000 works as well they heard coldplay and they thought hey let's do that Let, let's imitate that really um yeah so that's i think this kind of a coldplay ripple record which sounds really sad but it really is I don't hate coldplay by the way i really love the band but uh but definitely you know u2 is the better band if you want to ask but uh but u2 went from one of the greatest bands ever one of the most critically critically acclaimed bands from a coldplay ripple and you know that's a really big gap um yeah so there we go and i want to say something else but i forgot so i'm gonna end it there uh, thank you for watching this video uh definitely follow me on um uh, what what platforms metal storm all music on my other terror shadow realms and let me know what you think about this video of course like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, but let me know what you think about this youtube record uh, what do you think about youtube in general i really love them but I can't stand the modern stuff, so there we go. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think about them, and I will see you guys in the next video. God bless you, take care, and peace.